Hello, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Sudhakar Sharma. In this video session, we are going to discuss about ASP.NET MVC. In this session, we are going to learn how to handle communication with model. We will create one example that uh, describes how the communication happens between model, controller and view. We will keep some data in the model. We will access the data through controller and we will present into the view. Let us see the complete scenario how it works. So, first I am creating a new project. So, that is MVC demo and it is an empty MVC project. In this project, we will create some data. So, right click on models and uh, add a new class. I am creating a simple type class as product, product is a class. This product class is having three members. So, one is int product id, so get set and another property name, it is a string type name get set. And we have uh, this double type price get set. So, we just created a type in models. The type contains three members, the product ID, the name and price. So, now let us put some data for this. So, I will go to models. I will add a new class let us uh, say this class name as products data. Okay. In this products data class, I will configure some data for that product type. So, we can create a method or we can create any property that can return the list of some products so that we can access and use in our controllers. So, let us create some data here. So, I am creating public an i enumerable type, i enumerable type. It is a product type i enumerable and its name is some uh, products list. So, products list is an i enumerable. The intention of this i enumerable is to return a list of products. It depends on how you want to configure. So, i enumerable as a method or i enumerable as a property. If you are defining i enumerable as a method function, then it can directly return some value. If you are defining like a property, products list is an i enumerable, it is a property type, then we use the get accessor and what it has to do, it should return. So, it should return a list of some products. So, whenever we access the products list, it has to return the list of products. Let us create some list here. We will create a list. It is a generic list of what type product. I will give the name as products and it is a new list. Into this new list, we will add some products. So, we are creating a list of product type that means uh, every product will be a product type and every product will have a product id, it is an integer type value and a product name, so a string type value and uh, the product price, it is a double type value. So, we define some value. Let us add some another product, so a new product and uh, the product id is 2 and the product name some Nike shoe and uh, some price. So, price and uh, some price for that product, fine. So, we have a list of products and I want this i enumerable 
to return the list of products. So, return what it should return, it should return products. So, we have a products data class with the products list. Whenever you access the products list, it will return the list of all products. So, we generally uh, can use a method to return some value or some i enumerable to return that list. So, I created a generic type uh, i enumerable type to return the list of all the products. So, whenever you need to access this products list, so you need to create an object for this class products data and through that object access the products list. So, let us see how we can access this data and use in our application. So, in the models you can observe we have two classes, one is the product class, so with three different members product ID, name and price and products data class, it is having an I enumerable products list that can return the list of all products, okay, data is ready. Now, let us access this data and present in a view, how we can access the data, the communication between view cannot happen directly with model the entire communication in MVC framework is handled by a controller. So, let us add a controller that will enable communication between the view and the model. So, how to add a controller already we learnt in our previous sessions, I will right click on controllers add a new controller. So, it is an empty MVC controller and uh, let us name the controller as products controller. Okay. Now, a controller called products is created, the intention of this controller is to enable communication between the view and the model. So, first we need to access the model data in the controller. So, our model data is present in products data class, this products data class having a products list i enumerable and this products data is present in this library, it is in MVC demo models. So, in order to access this class in our controller, we have to import a namespace. So, using MVC demo dot models. So, that now in the products controller initially we can access the class products data. So, to access the members of the product data class, we will create an object db. So, for this class. So, we created an instance for products data, so that through this instance you can access the members of that class. Initially cl that class is defined with only one member that is an i enumerable called products list, which is returning the list of all products. So, how we can access the data and present? In our MVC sessions, we already discussed how to create an action method that can return a view. So, we need a controller action method that can return a view. How to create an action method to return a view? So, we have to make it as an view result type. So, if you are not aware of this topic, you can go through the previous videos where we discussed about various action results in MVC and how to handle them. So, we are creating an view result, we, we are creating an action method with return type as view result by name details. So, what is the intention of this details is if it is designed as view, view result, it should return a view. So, our intention of this details is whenever we invoke the details action, we will enter the product ID. So, it will search for that product ID and it will return that product ID, details of the product ID. So, whenever we invoke the details action, we need to pass a product ID into it. So, I will pass a parameter into it, integer ID. So, we have a details action that is expecting an ID, which is product ID. Now, I have to search for this ID in the collection of products and return that into view. How we can search? We will use simple link queue queries. Our data is present in products list. I will create an, I already created an object db, through this db I can access the i enumerable products list and it is a collection of all products in that I want to search for 
the product which is matching with the current ID. So, then I will use a simple link queue query single. Single is a link queue method which is used to perform an iteration over the collection and uh, identify the value which is matching with the expression you have defined and return that value. So, what is the expression? Here we are writing the expression x implies x dot. So, the product id, so product id is matching with the id. That means, we are writing a simple link queue query. This link queue query is to search for the product id that you have passed into the details and uh, if the product found return that product information. So, this query is performing an iteration over the collection of products and searching whether there is a product that is matching with your id. If it is found that means, it is returning one product type object. So, how do we store that product type object? I will create a product type product is equal to the result. So, we know that the single function is going to a return a product, we will store in a product reference. Now, if the required, if the specified product is available in the list, it will return that product and the result is in this product, we will pass this product into the view, we will add that into the view. So, that means, now details action is expecting the product id when we invoke, we will pass a product id, it will search for that product id in the collection and if that product found, then it will return that product to the view. Now, view has to collect this product and present, then how do we add a view and how do we collect the product details and display. Let us add a view for this action, right click on action and select add view. I will select a simple MVC view. I will give the view name as details, it is an empty view, ok, add. Now, we are adding a simple empty MVC view for our details action, but important here is into this details action. So, we are passing one product information we need to collect. So, how you can make view binded with the product type data? so that you can access and use the data, that we have to use at the net model. At the net model is an razor include which is used to include any type. So, if you want to include any type into the view, you want to bind the view with any model type, then you have to define by using at the net model. So, it depends on what type of data is coming you are sending a product type data that means, now view has to bind with model data and what type of data product type, how we can access that MVC demo, MVC demo in that models we have a type called product. That means, the controller you can observe, the controller is having a details action, this details action is passing a product and uh, if a product type is sent into the view view has to collect that product type. Now, whatever the data is collected that is defined in this model, actually this at the net model is representing a product type. This product type is having some members like product id and the product name and the product price. If you want to access the members of that particular type, then at the net model will provide a property called model. This model property is able to access the members of that type and use and what are the members you can access id and you can access name and you can access price. So, in order to bind our view with any model type, we have to use at the net model and to access the members of that particular type, we have to use a model property. So, what I am doing now already binded now access the members and display. I will put a heading, so here I will say details and in details I will put a data list with data term as product id and another data, data definition. Here I need to access the id and display 
and that is present in a model property model dot product id. Similarly, I need to access another data term, data term and uh, that is uh, name and access the name at the net model dot name ok and another data term price and I need to access the data definition at the net model dot price. So, we are accessing all the members and we are displaying. So, a details action is ready to pass the data into view and view is ready to collect the data and display the data. Let us see how this works. So, I will start my project run and we will make a request to the products controller details action and details action is expecting a product id as parameter as it is non nullable type it is mandatory to pass that parameter and when I pass the parameter it will search for that particular product and return if the product is found. So, let us make a query here. So, let us make a request here the controller name is products and uh, the action name is details and it is expecting the product id I will pass some product id to and hit enter. So, I am requesting the products controller details action and it is passed with the parameter 2. It will search for that particular product and controller will pass the product details to view and view will display the product if it is found and you can see the product details are available. Let us search for another product. I am changing the product id in the url as 1 and hit enter it will get the next product and show. So, we can access any specific product information and display. Let us create another action which can return the list of all products in a single screen. So, what I will do now here I will create another action let us make this as view result view result as index. The intention of this index is to return a view. Now, into the view we want to pass the list of all products then directly into the view I am passing the products list which is present in an i enumerable. How? DB is our model reference through that products list is a collection of all the products. We will convert that into two list and uh, we will pass the list into the view. So, we are collecting the products list and we are passing that products list into the view directly. So, index is expecting a list of products. Let us add a view for this. I will add a view for index ok and it is an empty view. Now, in this view we are expecting model with a list of products and you are sending an list of products here it is actually designed as an i enumerable. So, that means an i enumerable of product type data is coming here. So, how to collect that data we have to create an i enumerable type and it is mvc demo mvc demo in that models and it is an i enumerable of product type. So, in details we are just making strongly typed for product because only one product information is passed. If a list is passed then you have to access through a list type. So, view is using an i enumerable to access the list passed by the controller. So, controller is passing a list of products which are of type i enumerable. So, we created a model that means now this model contains the list of all the products. If it contains the list of products you know that in order to print the list you need to perform an iteration over the list. Let us do that. I will create a heading say products list and we have to perform an iteration. I will create a simple table. So, with some width some 400 ok and uh, in this table we will generate a table header like product id and uh, another table header for name and table header for price ok. Now, I need to generate a row for every product inside that model collection. So, I am using a for each statement. So, for each 
So, var item in collection, collection is model, model contains the list of all the records. Now, item is a reference for every product, every product information can be accessed by using this item. So, let us print this in a row, in a row first cell here I need to access item product ID and display the product ID under the header product ID and I am creating another at the net item dot name and another cell that is item dot price. So, we created an index action, the intention of this index action is to read the list of all the products and return the list of products. So, let us run this and see now. So, products controller is defined with two actions now, one is index which will return the list of all products, another one details to return any specific product. We are making a request for this products index and you can see it returns the list of all the products. So, to make this uh, in a tabular form, let us add some border for the table okay, and uh, just reload this and you can see we have a table. So, we have two actions, one index to, re to display the list of all the products and we have details. Details we need to pass the parameter, so it will get the details of that product and show. And index is returning the list of all products, index is returning the list of all products. So, let us add a little bit communication between these two actions that is uh, index and details, so that instead of requesting from URL, we can directly handle communication. Let us see that. So, what I am doing now is in this index action at the header, I will add a option like uh, view details. Okay. In the last cell, I will add a link so that it will redirect to details. And how do we define a link? We have to use HTML dot action link the link text should be details, details and it should redirect to an action called details, details and when details action is accessed, actually details is expecting a product ID as parameter, we need to pass that parameter. So, we are passing a parameter as a new anonymous type, a new anonymous type and the parameter is id into the parameter we have to pass the current product id so item dot product id so we are creating a link so called details when user clicks on details it will redirect to an action called details and uh, it will pass the current product id into details so obviously details is expecting a product id it will return that product let's get back navigation from details to index after viewing the details, here I will add another action link, HTML dot action link. It will say back to index and it has to redirect to an action called index. So, let us run this and see now whatever the changes we made in this action. You can see now the products list is having a details link for every product and when I click on details link of a product, it will get the detail of that product and show and we have a back to index mechanism and it will get back to the index. You click on details of any product, it will get the details and show and back to index, it will get back to the index. So, this is a simple example to demonstrate how the communication happens between model, view and controller. In our next example, we will see how we can handle this from database that we will discuss in our next video session. Thank you.